Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Andy Caruso. I am the public relations specialist here at Atlas Copco Power Technique. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining. We're uh, looking forward to presenting this webinar to you all. Um, like our host mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I will be monitoring the chat closely and relaying all your questions over to our presenter, Todd. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to kick it off to Todd Dahlstrom. He is the <clears throat> excuse me, business development manager for Atlas Copco Power Technique North America. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. Get a brief presentation here that will probably be a little bit less than your 45 minutes. Uh, if we have lots of questions, we'll probably wait until the end on those so we can get through this. But uh, thanks for joining us and We'll kind of get going here on some bypass pumping and uh, alert systems that Atlas Copco uh, wants to get people familiar with uh, out there in the marketplace. Um, the agenda for today, uh, we're going to talk about bypass pumping, which ties very closely to our alert pumping system. Uh, it's the permanent backup system, and they very much correlate together with the uh, temporary bypass systems that are out there and uh, some we're familiar with. Understanding the uh, components, sizing the system, tips for a successful bypass, um, the alert pumping system, uh, the benefits of using them for emergency pumping system. We'll talk about Atlas Copco's features and benefits for the emergency pumping system, as well as uh, different market opportunities. Understanding the components. Uh, there's two major components. Uh, the first one is your different types of pumps. We have suction, uh, centrifugal trash pumps, as well as submersible pumps. And a lot of your lift stations are utilize the submersible pump side of things. But uh, as we'll get in further, we'll talk about the different options and different uses of these. Uh, the other major component that's involved with these bypass pumping systems, as well as permanent backups, is the different piping options that are out there. Some are for more temporary use, some are going to be more for permanent, but there's different uh, suction uh, hoses, fittings, and your discharge piping is a lot more of your hoses and uh, different piping out there as well. One of the most more important things when we look into a bypass pumping system is we have to size the system. There are several different pieces of information that are needed before you can properly size it. As you work with people, they will ask you lots of questions because one of these pieces of the equation that is left out made a major impact on how this thing is sized properly in uh, your system together. But system uh, sewer line size, the overall diameter, it's very critical to know that because this will help you determine what your flow requirements are for that. And you really want to try to figure out what the low flow dry weather and peak wet weather flow rates are within those pipe system and they can very much vary depending on times of day too so if you're monitoring to try to figure that out uh, we very much encourage to monitor at different times of day and it's not always the same for every system i've seen uh, systems that you're common uh, you peak at eight nine o'clock in the morning when people are showering and doing your uh, laundry and things of that nature, but I've also seen it where it's one o'clock in the morning because it's very far down the line in a system out there. Being aware and checking all times a day is very critical when you need to try to determine the flows yourself and it might not be available. Uh, depth of the suction manhole is very critical. A distance to discharge, far away you're gonna be pumping. You wanna know what your system operations and requirements are and uh, your location, it should be something considered as well and we'll touch on later why that's uh, critical and why you want to make sure you get these things figured out uh, there's two different types of sewer systems that are out there and they both will have backup pump stations on them depending on geographically where you're at some there's not enough ability to have gravity so there's pumping stations for your storm sewer systems as well as your sanitary system and here's just a kind of a your rim elevation is typically up at your street level at the top. Invert, they're referring to the bottom. A couple key terminology things when you're looking at plans and trying to figure out uh, your bypass system needs and knowing the parameters. 
a little illustration here of the different storm sewers and sanitary. We talk about being able to come up and determine what your flow rates are in the pipe. There is a mathematical equation, as you can see here, some uh, engineering work, but the things that you need to know is your slope of the pipe, diameter of the pipe, as well as the uh, depth of the flow inside of it, and the type of pipe. A uh, type of pipe is critical because of different friction losses and some flow through easier than others. And uh, the critical information that's needed to determine what your flow rates are. Um, as you gather that information, you know, we talked about it and here's kind of a little illustration of your peaks and valleys at different times of the day. At the bottom here, we got times of day. This is maybe the depth of, and the flow with it's in the pipe. It vary throughout the day and you're definitely gonna wanna know what that is because it may determine uh, the proper sizing of your pumps, which we'll touch on uh, later on. Here is the, uh, what are the physical conditions of your uh, portable pumping application for your bypass? A lot of these determinations are very critical also in your permanent systems, but we talked about is your flow rate Talk about determining that elevations. Where is the system going to be at? What elevations, as well as the elevation from maybe the ground level where the pump is going to be sitting versus where it's going to be discharging. Um, where the pump is going to be sitting compared to where the lowest level of the water is going to be, you need to pump. The distances from the pump to the water, as well as from the pump to discharge, all these are very important equations that need to be answered to come up with a true engineered uh, solution or your uh, bypassing system. Pump sizing, selecting the right pump or pumps, the required flow. If you have a very large variant between your minimum flow and your maximum flow, it may require more than one. Uh, and we'll talk about a little further later on of why uh, the important to determine with some of the, the new advancements in uh, emissions and tier four final things. Suction lift, basically from the water up to the center line of your pump, very critical information and not all pumps are created equal with these different characteristics. A discharge head, they're standard, there's low flow, high flow, high head pumps out there. So knowing what your static discharge head is, as well as your distance will help you equate, to come up with your TDH versus total dynamic head these are all important factors needed as you are picking the proper pumps and the piping and sizing methods. Sometimes you might have uh, not an open discharge, so you're gonna know what your required discharge pressure might be, especially if you're going into a force main or some uh, other uh, discharge other than open discharge, you'll need to know that. Uh, effects on suction lift. This may be small for some of you guys to read. This is your head. This is how much energy it takes to push up. Um, as well as on the bottom, this is your flow, gallons per minute. These red lines represent suction lift. And the further you go to the right, the lower the suction lift is um, available to be able to gain in the flow rates because we're at zero four flow rate here and we're out at you know, over 3,000 here. The further right you go, the less suction lift that the pump is gonna be capable of doing. In other words, the, you have very minimum suction lift. You can uh, pump higher up, more head, create more energy, uh, the further left you are on the curve. So these are important information in sizing the pumps properly. Couple rules of thumb when you talk about Picking your piping size, whether it's your suction and discharge, kind of pick it at 12 feet per second through your pipe and hose and different piping that's out there. And that's because if you start going over 12 feet per second, you start getting a lot more resistance and turbulence. It doesn't flow through there as smoothly. Um, so when you're looking at a four inch uh, discharge rate, uh, and four inch diameter pipe and gallons per minute, you're looking at about 500 and you start going over that, you start to have a waste of energy or excess energy needed to push over that through a four inch. And you can see the thousand gallons a minute for six inch, eight inches, 2000, 4000. Over on the right here, I think this illustrates 
for every 750 feet, you're pushing through four inch. That's this line right here. And if you're looking at the six inch discharge pipe, it's the red one here. As you can see, obviously you're going to the right, so you're getting much more gallons per minute at a much lower need of head pressure to do that. So it can make a big variance, even though it might only be a four inch pump, but utilizing six inch hose will allow you to do much more flow. So the size of the pump doesn't always determine the size of the pipe. Not all four inch and four inch go together unless you're staying over 500 gallons a minute. That makes sense in a quick summary. Tips for the successful bypass. Um, you want to design the system, and you, but first you want to kind of figure out why are you doing it? Is it a relining or a repair of the system? Now, what is the scope? Is it is it uh, emergency or is it just a facilities upgrade? All these might determine what is going to be acceptably used for the uh, bypass that needs to be performed. We talked about already understanding your minimum and maximum. Bigger is not always better. I mentioned it earlier a little bit and touched on it, but tier four final engines like to have a load against them and have some resistance. So if you're taking a large pump that's barely working, um, it's not going to allow the emission system to work properly. So you might have to look at multiple pumps or sizing it properly so you're putting a good load on that uh, pump. And it's kind of a change and we're just getting into it these days. And it's something uh, very much to be considered. Um, knowing what the backup requirements are, every municipality, Area and engineer might have different ideas of what the uh, backup requirements are for uh, designing a system. So know that. Hey, Todd, we have a question in the chat. Um, how customizable are the systems that Atlas Copco provides? When it comes to our permanent system, we have a wide variety of options just because um, everybody's needs might be a little bit different and desired whether it's you know, lights or strobe lights and different things that they might want to accommodate in their system. So I would say that um, we got a very diverse offering out there. Uh, the experience that we've had and witnessed has uh, allowed us to bring more and more things on and always open to uh, new ideas if it's something that's needed. So good question. Great, thank you. And we actually have another question that just popped up from Reza. Is there a rule of thumb for maximum distance and elevation from suction point to the suction lift pump? That is a good question, and it's something that needs to be evaluated. Um, and it all is kind of based on all the things that come together, what your flow rate might be, what your ability for discharge piping size. So there's not a restriction on necessarily uh, how far you can go. Uh, you just might have to go to a larger pump or a larger pipe, for example, because the further you go, you get an increase in friction loss. Um, and there's also, you know, multiple size pumps, everything from, you know, two, three inch pumps all the way up to, I think there's, you know, 24 or 30 inch pumps out there nowadays. So um, case by case looked at and uh, does need to be evaluated to properly answer that, I guess. But uh, be happy to discuss if she's got some questions on that specifically at a later date, we can review it. Um, one of the things when you're evaluating and looking at it and things to consider when you're looking at your bypass is uh, I would like to say, get some help. There are several different professionals out there that do these bypasses on a very regular basis. This is part of their business. And they know it and they know it well, um, because having part of the information can get everybody in a lot of trouble and have issues later on down the line. So I strongly encourage to get professional help. Uh, there is um, options out there. If you do not work with a particular uh, pump company, feel free to contact us. We'll be help you, happy to help you get in touch with somebody. We like to think that uh, it's very critical to do a job walk and you know the entire thing as you see these pictures here. You get into permitting and challenges of how are you going to get from A to B and disrupt the public. The least amount is a big concern as well as environmental and other things that could come into play. So 
know the job from beginning to end, use a complete bypass specification. If you're on the engineering side, you really want to lay this out because if you don't, and it's up to everybody's perception of what they think is right, you could have a wide variety and you might not get a level playing field as well as a safe operating system that's out there. You want to know what your bypass plans are and review them carefully so you're uh, doing things in the proper manner. Operating the system properly. If you're working with professionals out there. If you look at this line on this curve, again, we have gallons per minute on the bottom and it will head. Uh, this is just an example of a system curve. And as you go to the right, You'll gain in flow, but you also gain. So if you are operating way up in this area and you have to run at 2000 gallons per minute, you are way outside of what the system should be needed to do what you're trying to do in your, in your bypass. So uh, having a good system and system curve in place to know where you're at on that can allow you to determine and making sure you're in the proper working parameters of the system that you've designed, because if it's not in there, there might be a, a good example or good reason for it and you wanna find out before it becomes a problem. Um, pumping something faster does not always mean better. You could be creating a lot of uh, cavitation, unnecessary fuel burn and damage to your pumps if you think you go wide open and you're up here at 2,200 RPMs when you don't need to be. Uh, sometimes you can lower your RPMs and get more flow, reduce cavitation and unnecessary wear on the equipment as well. Um, there's lots of automation and controls that are out there these days. We talk about here. Um, I'm a believer of keeping it simple. Uh, you can have transducers and floats that will turn the pumps on and off to keep them efficient and only be pumping when needed. And there's lots of telemetry out there that uh, can aid you in many different ways um, with your systems that you're uh, designing or installing. For those of us that live in the north, uh, freeze protection. Uh, when you're looking at a project or whether it's a permanent or a temporary system, you have to look at what are your risk factors in freezing? Uh, and when is the project gonna take place if it's a temporary system? Because you're bidding something in June and July, you're not thinking about it, but if this thing's gonna go down and have to take place in January, February, and you're in the northern part of the country, you could definitely have things you wanna take into consideration, things you need Protect your pump as well as piping, like block heaters, you know, chargers, trickle chargers, heat tape potentially. And then your piping system, it might be heat tape bearing it. Um, might have to use where you have constant flow so the pipe isn't as apt to freeze. Flow isn't always going to keep it from freezing, but it definitely reduces it. Higher velocity is going to be less chance of freezing as well, but there's parameters you want to stay within there as well. And of course, insulating it can help from freeze protection. Different obstacles. Uh, there is probably way more than listed here, but uh, you have different roadways you need to cross, driveways, businesses, creeks, lakes. So you have environmental as well as disturbing to the public. It should all be considered when you're looking at coming up with a bypass plan. Noise is something to be considered. As more and more bypasses are needing when they're doing rehab projects and things of that nature, they may be in a heavy populated areas where controlling the noise is a big part of the project. You might be in a heavy populated area or an area that's not so nice where you need to have things that are lockable so people aren't coming in, whether it's theft or damage, uh, as well as people just saying they don't want to hear it, so they shut it off. People in the pump business have definitely seen some of these things. So these are all things you want to take into consideration and advantages of having a sound attenuated uh, unit. Fuel, uh, it's something that always needs to be considered because if you're running these diesel units, you might not be in an area that you have easy access to hit it with like this truck there and it needs to be fueled every day or every other day. So you make sure that you have access or ability to get fuel to your system uh, it can be very important. If you do the systems curve, 
the professionals that you're working with or feel free to contact us. You could get that fuel consumption uh, so you know how often you are going to need to be fueled. If you're using larger pumps that are utilizing DEF fluid, uh, make sure that that's on hand and, and utilizing that properly. Auxiliary fuel tanks, get longer run times, all very critical stuff that you want to make sure you consider when looking at your bypass pumping designs. Some of the key takeaways, you want to know what your flow rates are, average peak flows as well as your low. You want to make sure you do your job walks, build a complete system. You want to know where you should be operating in your system, uh, not just turn it on and going wide open all the time. So key takeaways there. I see a question here from Don. Do you have a sizing cheat sheet or sizing tool? We do have them. It's not a, I guess, a published one that's out there, or, but our, a lot of our distributors and dealers do have them. If you're looking for something specific, let us know, contact us afterwards, and we can see if we can set you up with something. But um, this is recorded too, so you'll be able to see some of the key questions that are needed to be able to answer and get you some of those things to come up with a uh, somewhat easy sizing tool so you can size things properly. Uh, alert backup pump systems. Atlas Copco, uh, that's referred to it, it's an auto prime lift station for emergency run times. It's the acronym of alert. Here is a kind of a very typical lift station that is out there. You have your Submersible pumps that are down here in a wet well. You have your switch gear and your electrical power source that runs them. But if you were to run into electrical uh, outage, your generator would then be turned on to make sure that your uh, water or sewer, whatever it happens to be, is being uh, pumped and not building up and overflowing. So there's an example of standard lift station. Get your city power that goes to your switch gear to your control panel down to your submersible. Very common, mostly used out there. In some areas, necessarily used. But the challenge with the traditional systems is if you have an electrical failure in your switch gear, it's not going to be able to talk to the pumps to turn on the generator. Uh, lightning strike is a common thing. The majority of the failures in the Systems like these are in the middle here between the two, getting the power to the pumps. Many. And here is the alert system that we use for emergency backup pump stations. If the city loses power and the submersible pump no longer runs, you have a diesel driven centrifugal trash pump that can pump the sewage, pump it through the same piping and do your bypass, and it's a separate system from being on electrical grid. Getting to be more and more common, it can be very uh, cost effective, and efficient method to, and way to have your emergency backup systems. Um, the alert pump, I'll kind of go over a little bit of an example of the diesel centrifugal pumps for those that aren't familiar with it. But you want to know your pumps, and here's an example of, you know, you have a suction line, uh, your air separator, is there to, so when the machine pulls prime, the float comes in or shuts off the air and vacuum pump that's in here that will take the air out to auto prime the unit. Um, Atlas Copco uses a swing out door that gives you easy access to the impeller for cleaning out and maintenance. And also have the discharge here with a check valve that uh, so if you have pressure coming back to the pump, it doesn't flow back in your wet. It's a check valve there that keeps it going. You'll see here that this is a silence pump. Here's your engine, several different controller options that you have. They're all auto prime diaphragm vacuum pumps. So you get that automatic prime. Power Connect is a unique information gathering device. It's on all of our equipment at Atlas Copco. And you simply scan that a QR code and it'll tell you instructions book, It'll tell you if the machine is in warranty, what age it is, what 
in your parts list and things of that nature. So if you have service techs or uh, people within your city that go out to do routine maintenance, they can get all the information by simply scanning the QR codes. Fuel tank, uh, they're, all the pumps are built in there. You do have the ability to go to auxiliary, but uh, this is just kind of an example of a typical Atlas Copco pump. Again, this is kind of just a little bit of a summary of it. This is more an open unit. You can see it a little bit better. Swing out door, easy to get access. We utilize a link belt system. A lot of your pumping systems out there require you. The, the belt is in this area right here that I'm showing with the laser pointer. You have to remove and separate the engine and the pump end to be able to replace that belt where we utilize a link belt system. So it's easier to get up and running if that were to have be repaired into plan maintenance or as well as in an emergency situation. Check valve here is a different style of one. Here's what we call the volute, your suction, air separator again. We have a couple different models with the oil tank that lubricates the mechanical seal and some are built into the casing themselves like you see over here on the right. This is the diaphragm vacuum uh, system that can be anywhere from 28 to 50 CFM descent depending on the size and the model of the pumps. Uh, may be utilized. Controllers. PW1000, it's the most advanced controller out there. It's got the uh, larger digital color screen. It's very simple to use. It has multiple levels of uh, things that you can plug in there for inputs and outputs for different uh, SCADA systems and different uh, operations. They are all capable of auto start. So you don't necessarily have to be running the pump all the time. And two of the event manager, you have some people program them to run every so often. So they make sure that batteries are charged and they're ready to go in case of emergency. There's a USB port on them. So if you're programming them all in a regular uh, similar program, like you want it to start throughout the winter months, you can program them in there. You put it on a USB and you can go plug it in and upload that to each one so you don't have to go through the whole process and uh, so it's it's a nice thing for programming and specific operations that you're looking for it's kind of a, some pictures of your typical system you got your traditional submersible pump that might be down uh, in the wet well at a lift station and here is the uh, sound attenuated enclosed on a skid where the permanent piping is down in the lift station again like they're silent skid lockable doors Typically, you want to have 24-hour fuel autonomy. Uh, trickle chargers are very common, as well as your block heaters. Dry output uh, contacts, floats, and transducers. Some of the options in some markets that they really want to utilize is uh, natural gas engines. Might be Tier 4 final. Lights, your MOBOS, or SCADA systems. It might tie into the municipality's current uh, system so you can see where things are at and if they're up and running and where they're at throughout the city and the different lift stations they might have. Strobe lights and custom colors. Um, why would you install an alert system over the traditional? Um, we feel like it can be in a safety situation where you can operate it safer because you don't have electrical power needed to be able to operate the system when you're doing uh, routine maintenance. You know, your power can be off and you can still be and do some of the work that might be needed. You feel like you're going to get an increased run time with a pump versus a generator uh, because the, it doesn't have to run all the time. It might cycle as the well, wet well fills up, it pumps it down, and doesn't have to be running it continuously the whole time. I think it's a reliability situation from, like we mentioned earlier, that you're not putting all your um, dependence on electricity because you can uh, utilize it in different ways. And it's very similar to the same footprint as your uh, generators type uh, backup systems as well. Um, seeing a bunch of questions in here. I'm getting close to the end, very close. So I just want to do uh, finish up on these and I'll take a look at the questions. The reasons and uh, the parts of the applications where people use an alert pump installation, uh, a lot of times it's new construction. It is becoming more and more popular uh, during new construction, especially in certain markets. 
to utilize these because of the advantages. They also list a upgrade for capacity. Um, as things grow and more uh, flow is needed, it's an effective way to put in more capacity into a lift station without having to completely replace it. And it could delay the uh, lift station overhaul and expense that might be needed or you know, financial budgets and constraints that many uh, folks have in different municipalities. So it can delay the uh, dreaded needed uh, overall overhaul of the lift station in retrofits. Quick summary on things, you know, we want you to know your systems and the requirements. Know the equipment and capacities that, that are available and get help from a professional. And we also feel like it's a, a great way to reduce risk is uh, with your alert pumping system. Here's my email address that uh, I'll leave up here as I take a look at the uh, questions that have come in. Um, let's see here. I can relay these questions back to you okay. if easier, Todd. So this next question is from Troy. Is it typical for the client to request that the plug being used to create the bypass has an analog signal sent out in real time and alarm when it goes below the required PSI? Well, I understand what he's asking and this is kind of out of our um, area to comment on it too deeply from a standpoint is every municipality is different on what they require and how they utilize sewer plugs. And I believe that's what you're referring to is your different signals that sewer plugs can put out if you're losing pressure. Um, that's a case by case basis and being that it's not really involved with the pump side of it, uh, it, it can be involved with your temporary bypasses, but um, it's kind of an independent case by case basis, I would say. Great. And the next, well, not, it's not a question. It's a reply to Troy uh, from Chris. Chris said, Troy, not in his experience. He had 20 plus years in bypass pumping, utilizing plug, plugs, never had that request. So thank you, for Chris, for your reply and your input. And then we also have another question from Reza. Is there a chart showing capacity and head ranges with corresponding and outer dimension for alert system? I think the foundation or the basis of all these uh, alert systems are off our portable units as well. And then we put them in, uh, you know, might be different engines, electrical, diesel. Uh, the flow ranges and the charts that are available are the same as our diesel portable units. So that is something we can and be happy to share that with you. If you want to shoot one of us an email or give us a call, we can uh, give you an idea of what's a, what's available and what's there for sure. And then another question from Reza, any limitation with the max capacity of alert system? Well, I mean, there's always limitations to everything. Uh, you might have to use multiple units to hit a certain flow rate, or if there is an extreme amount of head, it may be outside of the, the realm and, and limitations. Um, you do run into certain areas of the geographical area where they run their sewer systems much deeper. And uh, then you are limited to sticking with the submersibles because you are uh, are limited on the suction lift capabilities of a centrifugal diesel trash pump like we were talking about. So it's not a one size fits all everywhere. Uh, they do have great applications, but it's not for everything if that answers your question. So there is. Uh, capacity limits uh, to these um, alert systems as there is with anybody. And then we just have one more question so far. How do we know these systems will work in our lift stations? You know, when we went through and looked at all the different physical conditions and needed, it's a, a very loaded question from the standpoint of you really need to answer all those questions to be able to determine if it will work or not. And that's where we'll be happy to uh, evaluate and work with you as well as our distributors to determine if an alert system is a, uh, a good fit for your need. And really hard to leave out a couple parts of the equation and still give a, a proper confident answer 
because it's also vital. It's kind of like missing that link in the chain. You're missing one link, it doesn't hold together type of thing and it might not work, so. Receives. So Good those question. are all the questions I see in the chat. Uh, maybe we could give it an extra second or two to see if anyone else is typing before we sign off. While we're waiting for those questions, we just want to say thank you again for taking the time out of your day to join us for um, our webinar. Um, again, my name is Andy Caruso, so uh, public relations specialist here at Atlas Copco, and our presenter today is Todd Dahlstrom, business development manager for Atlas Copco. If you have any questions after the webinar closes, feel free to reach out to Todd. His email is on this slide.